Hello girls and boys. Today I'm going to read you one of the short stories out of this book, The Magic Brush and Other Short Stories by Eno Blyton. I think it's a really pretty book and it's got some lovely stories in it and some really pretty pictures so I will show them to you as we go along. Today we're going to read The Disappearing Hats. Once upon a time, in the village of Getabout, there was a hat shop. Two gnomes owned it, Sniffle and Snuffle. They made excellent top hats in all colours. Blue, pink, yellow and green for all the folk of Getabout, who went to a great many meetings and parties and wore top hats very often. And then a strange thing happened. The top hats belonging to the people of Getabout began to disappear in a very peculiar way. Burly one, the gnome, had just bought a magnificent green one with a yellow band round it. He wore it to a meeting in the next village and felt very smart indeed. He came home and hung it up as usual in the hall. The next day it wasn't there. Then another hat disappeared. This time it was Curly Top's hat. He was a pixie and had a very choice top hat. Pink with a blue band and he had stuck a little feather in at the side. He had put his in a box on the shelf of his bedroom. But bless us all, when he had looked in the box the next day, the hat was gone. The only thing in the box was the little feather. When Curly Top and Burly One met and began to tell one another about their vanished hats, two others came up and said theirs had gone too. I put mine on the kitchen table, said Bog the brownie. This morning it wasn't there. And I put mine on the knob at the end of my bed, said Chortle the elf. And I know it was there when I went to sleep, because my wife said to me, Chortle, you've put your hat on the knob again, instead of in its box. So I knew it was there, and this morning it was gone. And there's a party today at the Lord High and Mighty's, groaned Burly One. What are we to do? We must go in top hats. We'd better go to Sniffle and Snuffle and see if they have any hats to fit us, said Curly Top. I don't expect they will have. They went to the gnome shop and explained to them about their vanished hats. Sniffle and Snuffle listened and looked very surprised indeed. Now the thing is, Sniffle and Snuffle, said Bong, we've got this party this afternoon. Can you pos possibly let us have hat top hats in time? I suppose you'd like them just the same as your others, said Sniffle. Yes, said everyone. We'll try to manage them in time, said Sniffle, but we're afraid we will have to charge you more than usual, as we shall have to work extra hard. Oh dear, said Chortle. Well, I suppose it can't be helped. Exactly ten minutes before Curly Top, Burly One, Chortle and Bong were ready to set off to their parties, their hats arrived from Sniffle and Snuffle. They put them on, each in delight. Really, they might have been the same hats that they had lost. They fitted perfectly. Now, that night, three other hats disappeared, belonging to Fee, Fi and Fo, three brother goblins. And they were terribly upset, because they had to go to a most important meeting that day. And how could they be seen? without their fine top hats. And here you can see some gnomes with the top hats. Let's carry on. I put mine in my bedroom at the top of the wardrobe, said Spee. And I hung mine on the chair, said Fi. I don't know where I put mine, but it was somewhere, groaned Fo. We better go to Sniffle and Snuffle and see if they can let us have hats in time, said Fee. So off they went, and the two gnomes promised to work hard and sent three hats in good time. But we shall have to charge you more money, said Sniffle. Now as more and more people's hats disappeared, the people of Getabout Village became very angry. They lay in wait for the robbers, whom they thought must have come to steal their hats. But never a robber did they see. It was most peculiar. The only people who didn't mind about the disappearing hats 
for Sniffle and Snuffle, who did a roaring trade and charged everyone more than usual because they were so busy and hard and worked so hard. At last, Fee, Fi and Fo, whose hats had disappeared for the second time, went to visit the wise woman, Dame Thinkabout. She listened to their tale and then nodded her head. So you want to find the thieves, she said. We'll tie a long, long string to your hats, goblins, and then, when they disappear, follow the string and you'll find the thieves at the end of it. And this is them visiting the wise lady. What a good idea, said Fee, Fi and Fo, and they went home and each of them carefully tied a very, very long string to his hat. One end was round round the hat, and the other was tied tightly to the bed knob. Nothing happened that night, but the next night the goblins were awakened by a strange whistling sound. They lighted a candle. Their hats were gone. Quick, said Fee, tumbling out of bed, we must follow the strings. They found that the strings went out of the window, down the garden, across the road, over the long meadow, down the hill, and into, where do you think? Why, into Sniffle and Snuffle shop. Yes, really. The goblins peeped into the shop through a crack in the curtains. They saw Sniffle and Snuffle there. Sniffle was standing in the middle of a room, chanting a magic rhyme, and Snuffle was standing with his arms out to catch the hats that came in at the window. Oh, the wicked robbers, said Fee, Fi and Fo angrily. They make our top hats, but they put a disappearing spell in them so that we can't get them back. And then they sell them to us again for more money than before. The goblins all climbed in at the window and began to shout at the, su at the surprised gnomes. Robbers! Thieves! Wait till people have get about here what we have found out. Yes, just wait until tomorrow morning. Mercy, mercy, begged the two gnomes, pale with fright. Certainly not, said Fee, who pinched Snuffle's long nose. We, he had wanted to do that for a very long time. Give us our hats. The goblins took their hats and put them on and stalked out of the shop. Yaha, you wait till tomorrow, said Fo. You can guess how angry the folk of Getabout were when they heard all that Fee, Fi and Fo had to tell them. They marched to the gnome shop next morning, but it was closed. A notice hung outside, gone away. You can all eat your hats. What cheek, snorted Chortle, in rage. Well, we can at any rate use the hats they had li left behind, said Bong. There are heaps of top hats in the shop. The folk of Getabout tried them on, and there were enough for everyone to have two or three. I'm glad I pulled Sniffle's long nose last night, said Fee. I wish I had pulled Snuffle's too. Nobody knows what became of the two bad gnomes. And a very good thing too. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. We shall surely have a couple more of Enum Blyton's from the Magic Brush and other stories. Um, so I hope you enjoyed and I shall see you soon. Bye.